Hello and welcome to Creativity Montessori and the Meeting of Life. My name is Robin Norgren and I am your host at this podcast. I want to start with an, um, a poem by Mary Oliver called Invitation. Oh, do you have time to linger for just a little while out of your busy and very important day? For the goldfinches that have gathered in a field of thistles? For a musical battle to see who can sing the highest note or the lowest? Or the most expressive of mirth or the most tender? Their strong blunt beaks drink the air as they strive melodiously, not for your sake and not for mine, and not for the sake of winning, but for sheer delight and gratitude. Believe us, they say, it is a serious thing just to be alive on this fresh morning. In this broken world, I beg of you, do not walk by without pausing to attend to this rather ridiculous performance. It could mean something. It could mean everything. It could mean what Wilkie Wilkie meant when he wrote, you must change your life. This is an excerpt from a book I wrote about 10 years ago called Your Creative Peace, Find and Deepen Your Creative Voice While Communing with God. It was something I wrote um, at the very beginning of my creativity um, journey where I really wanted to figure out what it meant. Um, Was everybody creative? How do you go about finding your creative voice? What What is it about having a muse and being inspired? And so I journaled my thoughts for about two years, and then I put them together in a book. And this is an excerpt from that book. June 14, 2011. I was on a yoga mat in a challenging yoga class for the first time in months. I was on the mat praying for understanding of who I am, who is this in, in this body, and what am I to do? My body right now just feels out of sorts as much as my mind does. The many, many missteps that I am simply battled, baffled by But on the mat, well, I felt okay to start there. Just let my body talk to God and let my ears and heart listen. Really listen and not just guess. Psalm 24 verses 3 through 5 says, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol, or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God the Savior. Scott McKnight, a theology professor and author of several books, including The Blue Parakeet, administers a test to incoming college freshmen. They are asked to provide a rendering of Jesus through the use of multiple attributes. On a separate occasion, they are asked to offer a rendering of themselves through a similar scope. He found that high percentages of people attributed the same attributes to Jesus as they do to themselves, also rendering Jesus with similar skill sets as they do to themselves. This is not how we want to approach our spiritual lives. The Bible helps us to recalibrate our self-portraits. For many, this will happen in ways that will bring freedom and relief, but in other ways it will bring peace and comfort. In some cases, humility will occur, but all in all, a sense of wholeness and love will be the end result. The idea of having our hearts laid bare brings a sense of exposure, vulnerability, and purity, encased in the intention to walk with God. Our hearts hold our dreams and ambitions, but also our fears and insecurities. We love because we trust. Love and trust intertwine in a beautiful, deepening rest that come from no other place than a deep relationship with God. Have you ever thought to write in your journal? 
just write your thoughts down, either like a gratefulness journal or just your morning thoughts, um, your fears, your concerns, just to get them out of the way so that you can progress through your day. I would challenge you to do that for 30 days and see what you find out about yourself. Another way to do it, if you're concerned about how you'll feel about looking at a blank page, is to go to um, the, the book of Psalms in the Bible and read a psalm, or at least a few verses from a psalm, every day for 30 days. And just write down the verse that really speaks to you on that day. And maybe write a few uh, bullet points of why um, that seems to be illuminated um, as you're reading through it. Have you ever thought about what ways you might be living that um, makes you put God in the same light or on the same footing as you? What, what characteristics do you attribute solely to God? And what circumstances do you find yourself in right now that God must intervene in order to for change to occur. Here's some for, more notes from that same journal. It's dated June 16th, 19th, uh, 2011. I felt like I had a worried look on my face when I woke up this morning. Constant worry. It seems about one thing or another. I'm definitely trying to put all areas of my life into perspective. Do I have to write? No, but I want to. Do I want to start a business or is it just a hobby? Are we going to move out of state again? Well, that remains to be seen. But in the meantime, I am hit with the realization that maybe it's time to go. Here's a verse um, from Psalms that you might want to ponder. Psalm 24, 15 through 17. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from angst. Are you afraid of the unknown? Are you concerned that you are not really engaging with who you are and instead just walking through life kind of on an automatic pilot where you're not really processing anything, you're simply getting through the day? I can honestly say that especially when those times when my husband is deployed, it's very difficult for me to engage with the world. I find I'm walking through it in a way, almost like holding my breath and stopping time, which I know that doesn't happen, but you try it because you just don't want to acknowledge how much time is passing and how many memories you're not making together. and how you need to always manage your expectations. So it's such a fine line to go through things like deployments or um, just long seasons where you know you're in an uncomfortable place without shutting down. That's why journaling and um, just taking that time every morning really has been such a help for me because I find that if I don't do that, I'm walking around with worry on my face all the time. And so this kind of allows me a place to house that worry in the form of a book, in the form of my um, the writing, uh, so that I can kind of release it. I know it's there and I don't have to keep track of it in my mind all day. And I wanted, I, I will say that I've been doing it pretty consistently now for the last year, although I've done it for decades now, um, but when I am very consistent with it, I find that it allows me to just be free to see what is going on in front of me rather than worry about what I can't change. 
Well, I hope this has given you food for thought for today. As we progress over the next few weeks and, and months, I've come up with a couple of different segments for how I want to start to evolve this once I'm finished with this book. Feel free to come back and um, write down these questions and use them as your journaling prompts. Or you can also go to my website. All my links are housed over on Instagram under at Robin underscore Norgren. And you can pick up one of the copies of the book, um, Your Creative Peace, Finding and Deepening Your Creative Voice While Communing with God. Thanks for so much for taking the time to stop by. I do know that you have many options, and I'm so glad you've taken the time to, to just step into this world here and to think about creativity, Montessori, and the meaning of life.